In this course, you will improve your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript skills by building a portfolio website. Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be building a portfolio website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this is the main homepage of the, uh, the portfolio. Okay, so we have some nice have effects on the buttons and the images. We can also toggle between light and dark theme. Okay, so the next section is going to be the about section. We're going to have some information with also nice have effects. And we're going to have some stats here with progress bars. And we're also going to have a timeline. Okay, so it also looks nice on the light theme. Okay, and then the next section is going to be the portfolio section with a nice have effect. One of these buttons can lead us to any website that, that you link it to. Okay, so for example, if you want to get to GitHub, you can click and then it goes to GitHub or YouTube, whatever. Okay, and then the next section is going to be the blog section. We also have a nice have effect on the images and the blog item. Okay. So, yeah, that it is. And then finally, we have the contact section. We can put your contact information here. Anything that you want, it's up to you. This website is also responsive. It's going to support multiple screens. You can even make it more responsive as much as you want. So when I decrease the width, it's going to check those controls here and then put them down here. You can sort of, you know, switch between the pages within the controls down here instead of them to be on the right side. Okay, so as you can see, everything's going to respond nicely to different screen sizes. Okay, so same as the about, it's going to be nicely responsive. And also the portfolio is going to be nicely responsive. Yeah, also everything is responsive. So I'll show you everything, how to make it even more responsive. You have the knowledge to make it different. So yeah, I think that's it for this quick demonstration. I'll see you in the video. I have uh, an images folder here, so there isn't many images. So these are the images that we're going to be using in this project. I'm going to start by creating a new HTML file, index.html. Then I'm going to create a new folder. So this one is going to be storing our, all of our styles. Inside the styles folder, I'm going to create a new style. So the extension we're going to be using for this one is SCSS. So that's uh, the SAS preprocessor. It's much quicker to do styles than normal CSS. So to be able to use SAS, you need to go to the extensions and look for SAS. And then you're going to find the SAS and then install that. And also there's a live compiler. So we don't need to restart every time that we make updates to the code. So we can just uh, uh, compile the code live. Okay. So now uh, you might also want to download HTML and CSS snippets. So if you try HTML, CSS support, just install these two. Okay, I think that's it for now. Uh, we just need to go to the styles and let's do basic page resetting. So I'm going to set the margin to zero because by default the page is going to have a margin and padding to zero, box sizing, zero, border box actually, border box, and then list style to none. Okay, so in the body, I'm just going to give it a background color of red just to check out if our styles are working. So uh, we need to compile this SAS file inside the styles folder. So here you, you're going to see uh, a button says watch SAS. Click that button. Okay, and then it's going to generate a style CSS uh, file here. So let's go to the index and generate HTML boilerplate. So to do that, hold shift and one and then click enter. Shift, hold shift, one, enter. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name this portfolio. Portfolio. Okay, so now I'm just going to link the style CSS file styles style CSS. So I'm going to run this with the live server. So you can go to the extensions and look for live server plug uh, extension. Okay, so I'm going to run this now with the live server. There it is. Okay, so that means our styles are working. So I'm going to get rid of the background color of red. 
I'm gonna get rid of that. I am going to actually get some fonts first. Uh, Google fonts. Google fonts. I'm gonna get the font called Poppins. Okay, so you need to select some font weights. So and we're, we're going to be using regular 400, 500, uh, 400, 500, the regular ones only, all the way to 800. So once you've done that, you just need to copy this, the link. Once you've copied, uh, go to the index below the styles and then paste in the font weights. Okay, so I'm also going to copy the font family name and then I'm gonna put it in the body. Okay, so now that we've done the fonts, uh, we're going to be able to toggle between dark and light mode. So to do that, we're going to be using some variables, some CSS variables. So to do variables, uh, we're going to type root, and then we're going to put some variables inside the root. Okay. So the, mainly the variables we're going to do are for the colors. Okay, so you can do a variable literally for anything, but for mainly in this video, we're going to do colors. So the first one is going to be color primary. And so the color primary is going to be like a dark color, 191, and then uh, D2B. I think that's the color. Yeah. Okay, so that's the color. I'm going to paste in the rest of the colors because I don't want to waste your time typing the colors one by one. Okay, so these are the variables that we're going to be using. So now, uh, for the body, I'm going to give it um, a background color. So to be able to use the variable, you do var primary. So var primary color, we're going to be utilizing this variable, which is a, a color, a dark one. Okay, so I'm going to also do a font size, a default font size. It's going to be 1.1 rem. So that's going to be our default font size. Um, also, I'm going to give a different color. The different color is going to be white. So by default, I want all the text to be white. Okay. And then I want also have a transition. Transition. So the transition is going to be 0.4 seconds is in and is out. Okay. So like that. So now that we've done that, let's go to the index. So in here, I'm going to give the body class of main content so main content so that's the body and then in the body we're going to have a header a header with a class of section and then another class name of sec sec one section one and then another class of header and then uh, it's going to have another class of active you're going to see why we're using active I'll explain later as we go I'll press enter okay so now we have the header and then let's go to your main. In the main, we're going to have section dot section. Uh, section is going to have a class of section and then dot another class section two. And then another class about. Okay. So now I'm going to click enter. So now we have a section. Okay, so we're going to have uh, five more sections. Okay, so we have uh, section section two about so this uh, that's that's the class name. I'm going to uh, duplicate this uh, two more three more times one two three. Okay, so it's going to all of them are going to contain a class of section. All of them. I'm just going to change this from sec two to sec three, section four and section five. Okay, you can just uh, change the class names here from about to portfolio. And then the other one, this one is going to be blogs. And then this one is going to be contact. Contact. Okay. So that's that. Uh, now we have the sections. Uh, we need to, let's start by styling all these sections. Before we add any content, uh, let's work on the functionality to switch between the sections. Okay. Using the JavaScript. I'm going to uh, introduce you to font awesome. I'm going to say font awesome CDN. CDN and then look for the font of some CDN look for the version version 5.1 uh, 5 and then copy the link tag and then go below the Google fonts uh, even above and then just paste in the link 
okay so now we've pasted the link for font awesome font awesome we can you know like sort of get icons from font awesome font awesome instagram let's say we want to use the instagram icon so we can copy this instagram icon let's see if it's working i'm just gonna paste it down here i'm gonna save let's see in the preview if it's working or not uh let's see there it is so that means it's working so it's white as well that's the default color of the website and the icon is working so that means font awesome is installed successfully so now uh, let's start by styling the sections okay uh, i'm also gonna going to target all of the links the anchor tags i'm gonna say display line block line block and then text decoration to none and then i'm gonna say uh, i'm going to actually give it um what's this i forgot the name color color is going to be inherit we're going to inherit the color we have in the body and then font family is going to be inherit inherit is all okay so now that's that uh, let's go start each individual section so these sections we're going to be able to switch between the sections because of the positioning they're going to have they're going to have a position of absolute so each section is going to have a minimum height of 100 vh okay so that's the minimum height and then a width of 100 percent and then we're going to do position of absolute and then we're going to do left zero top to zero as well top zero and then we're going to do padding so padding is spacing so top and bottom the spacing between top and bottom is going to be three ram and then 18 ram left and right okay so ev each and every section is going to have this these tiles okay and actually we need to also do the header so the header is going to have a height a fixed height of 100 vh so the height for the header is going to be fixed okay and then we're going to do a color the color for that is going to be a uh, white color white for the color white i don't know why i didn't autocomplete and then uh, we're also going to have an overflow of hidden just in case something overflows okay so now nothing happens uh, when i inspect this we have all, all of this all of those sections that are on top of each other okay because we're using position of absolute so now they're all laying on top of each other. So to create the effect of uh, switching between these sections, we need a way to hide the rest of the sections and then only display the one that we've clicked on. Okay, we're going to do that later in JavaScript, but now let's keep going. I'm going to target a section class. So this section class I'm going to do, so by default, I want it to be away from the screen. I want it to be off screen. Okay, so I'm going to use a transform for that, for that and then I'm going to translate y minus 100% because by default I want it to be off screen. Okay, and then I'm also going to do a transition. You can create a variable for this transition actually if you want because we're going to reuse this a lot of times in this video. So you can, you know, make it easier by creating a variable for that. Okay, so now we have a transition and also we need a background color. So for this one, it's going to have a var primary color, primary color. Okay, so that's that's the one. So each individual sections, we can style them differently. We can give them a different background color, a different whatever. So I'm going to tag a section one, sect one, sec one. So this sec one, you can give it a, a different background color if you want to. But by, by default, I want it to be none, the display. I don't want to display anything because I want to be able to switch between the, these sections. Okay, I'm going to do transform as well. Translate. Translate Y. Actually, it's Y. I want to translate Y. Zero. For now. And then uh, we're going to do scale. We're going to do one. Okay, so now when we this section is active, it's going to come back to the d default place. So here we, we did uh, transform, translate Y minus 100% and scale, we did zero here. So uh, once we come back to the default place, it's going to, you know, it's going to make like an animation coming in off screen 
and scaling all the way to one. So the scale works from one, zero to between zero and one. Okay, so we need to do this for the rest of the sections. So I'm just going to paste in some codes for the for the rest of the sections. So these sections, each individual section, you can give it a different background color. Okay, you can kind of you know give it a different background color just to see your to your liking. Okay, nothing much. Nothing much happens here. Nothing much. So now, for now, let's uh, let's do the buttons which are going to let us control these sections. So these buttons, I'm gonna do dot controls. So make sure controls. I'm pretty sure this is the wrong spelling, but it doesn't matter. So inside the controls, we're going to have the buttons. Okay. So each individual button is gonna have a class of control. So I'm gonna do dot control. Control. So that's a button. It's gonna have a control, and then it's gonna have a, a control. One so the the first one is going to be control one, the second one control two, control three, and so on. So I'm going to say control. So this one is control one. I'm going to use the dollar sign. So the dollar sign it means um, increment the numbers automatically depending on how many classes, on how many divs we've created. Okay. So control and then it's going to have another class of. Uh, actually, it's not going to have any other class. And I'm just going to hit enter. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna put a class of active BTN. So that's the first one's gonna have a class of active button. I'm going to multiply this by five. Okay. So th uh, the, the, we don't need uh, active button on the rest of the divs. Okay. So you can like get rid of this. We only want the first one to have um, active button. So we have control, control one, control two, three, or the way to five. Okay. So inside each of these uh, divs, I'm going to put uh, a corresponding icon. So in this case, you can go to Font Awesome and then you can, for example, search, let's say, Home. You can look for an icon that you are looking for, in this case, this one. And then you're just gonna copy this and then you paste it in, like so. So that's the icon we're looking for. I'm just gonna paste in the this data instead of me doing one by one. Okay, so we are using Warm Briefcase Newspaper em Envelope Open. I'll get rid of this so you, I'll explain later. Okay, so now I'm gonna save this. As you can see, we have the icons, there they are. So for, for us, we want these icons to be here on the right side. So to do that, we're going to be using uh, position of fixed because we want it to be at a fixed position. Okay, so uh, we're going to target the controls. You can make a comment, you can say controls controls and then here you, you just do cont dot control okay so this is the parent so position we're going to do position of fixed so that's the parent container and then z index is going to be 10 because I want it to be always at the top and then I'm going to do top 50% okay and then right is going to be 3% so we want it to be aligned to leave a space of uh, 3% from the right. So there they are. So now they're leaving 3% of space from the right side. Okay, so now we're going to do display flex flex direction column and then uh, we're also going to I think we might be able to uh, give them a, a font size some, some time later but I want to actually center this in the Y axis. So to center this in the Y we can do transform translate y minus 50% to center this in the y. So as I save, as you can see, they are, they now have, they have updated. They have now nicely centered. Okay, so we've uh, kind of centered. I'm gonna do align items to center, and then justify content to center as well. Okay, so I'm going to target the control class control control class so for the control class i'm going to give it a padding so it's like spacing around it so the spacing is going to be one rem and then a cursor is going to be pointer cursor pointer and then i'm going to give it a background color uh, background color is going to be var so it's going to be four gray four so it's going to be gray four 
so that's the background color so width and height is going to be uh, 55 pixels because I want it to be rounded so width and height has to be the same if you want to make something rounded so the border radius is going to be 50% to make them rounded okay so as you can see now they are rounded but I want to center these icons they're not centered nicely so to do that uh, we're just going to use uh, flex it's easy display flex and align and just for content to center okay so I'm also going to make a spacing between these icons so the spacing that we're going to use is margin so top and bottom is going to be 0 0 0.7 rem and then 0 left and right okay uh, also we're going to give a box shadow box shadow we might also want to put this box shadow in a variable to be honest uh, I'm gonna create a um, here I'm gonna say box shadow I don't know shadow one and then these are the values so zero on the x-axis three pixels on the y 15 pixels uh, for the blur and then the opacity 0 0.3 okay so this is the box shadow that we're going to be using I'm just gonna do var and then I'm just gonna paste in the variable just in case we don't like redo this box shadow because I'm going to be reusing this box shadow a lot in this video okay so uh, there they are they're showing nicely so I want to also resize this icon the icon size so to do that uh, I'm gonna target the eye which is the eye inside the icon uh, if you don't already know about SAS we can nest in the elements okay so we can nest some HTML elements so that's what I'm doing right now so I'm gonna say font size I'm gonna put this to 1.2 RAM I want it to be slightly bigger and then I'm gonna also give it a color and pointer events of none so pointer events it means I don't want to click if when I click I don't want it to do anything it, it doesn't react to the click or to the mouse whatever okay so now with let's save everything looks nice everything looks on point okay so now I'm going to so if you remember here I've given this a class of active button so the whatever button I want this active class to be applied to whatever element that I've clicked on and also at the same time remove other elements with that class okay so when I click this I want only this button to have that class active button active button and then remove the remaining active buttons class names so uh, that 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 function that feature is a little bit tricky for you know for beginners but it's actually easy to do so what we're going to do now actually i'm going to style the active button first so wh whatever active button so in here uh, above the control i'm gonna say dot active button i'm gonna style that so it's just giving it a background color and a transition okay like so background color is going to be the secondary color which is the green color and then i'm going to target the icon inside it the eye so i'm gonna just target the icon and give it a color of white okay so there it is so that's the active button it seems like everything is nicely centered now yeah so now the active button is going to be green okay so now that the active button is green uh, we just need to go to the javascript and let's create a new javascript file actually so let's do new file it's going to be up to js so this app.js uh, i'm going to select some html elements so i'm going to select all items or elements using the section class so con set, uh, const sections document query selector query selector all everything that has a class of section so as you remember we've given all, all of the sections a class of section so it means i'm selecting everything with a class of section so i'm targeting this i'm also going to select um I'm also going to select the but section buttons. So the section buttons is the parent container of this of these buttons. So the controls. So th these are the section buttons. So it's like the parent. I'm selecting th this parent container. And then inside I'm going to also select the each individual button with a class of control. Okay? So um I'm just going to 
Okay, so there is a section button, controls. So this is the parent, this is the actual button. I'm also going to select uh, the body. The body is a class of main content. So there is the body, main content, that's the class. Okay, so in here, I'm just going to create a new function. I'm gonna use the actual function, function, create a new function, and then I'm gonna say page transition transitions maybe you can name this function whatever you want it's up to you really so now I'm going to comment here I'm gonna say uh, button click active class active class okay so what what do I want to happen when I click the button so th this, I want to be able to get rid of the class uh, that is not active. Only the active class, that's that's what I want to have the class on. So uh, we're going to do a loop. We're going to do four. So uh, we're going to do let, we're going to create a new variable. So let i, okay, so it's going to be initially uh, set to zero. And then we're going to say i is less than, as long as i is less than, uh, is is less than uh, the length, the length of the, the the button, okay? The section BTN. So section BTN uh, is this one, okay? So as long as the as I is less than that, we're going to increment increment. All right. So now that's that. So in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, set button. So the sec sec set button is, uh, I'm going to look for the index, the i. Okay, whatever index we're on. And then I'm going to say it's goes to, actually, I'm going to add an event listener to whatever index we've cl clicked on. So the, this i is, is the index. Okay, so I'm going to say dot add event listener. So the event listener is going to take to the first one is going to be click and then the second one is going to be a callback function. So blah, what, what am I doing? This one is going to be a callback function. So in, in, in this callback function, okay, so in this call, I'm going to select the current button, whatever button we've clicked on uh, the current button can button we're on current btn and then i'm going to say it's close to document so we're going to do query selector all with a class of active button okay so if you remember all, uh, the buttons are going to have a class of active btn okay so i'm selecting that it's a car it's with the with name of current button so i'm going to say current button the first one with an index of zero. I'm gonna say do a class name. Then I'm gonna say current btn index zero. And then I'm gonna do class name. I'm going to not list class name. And then I'm going to replace that with an empty string. Uh, once we're out of the, once it's not active. Active btn and then I'm going to replace with an empty string okay so current, uh, whatever button we've clicked on uh, when we're not clicking ugh, clicking it anymore we're going to get rid of the class and replace with the empty string so here i'm going to do this dot uh, class name so the, this uh, is referring to this function okay so this is uh, like a confusing topic to learn about the this keyword in javascript uh, kind of weird and then I'm going to do plus equal to active button active btn okay like that so now when I save uh, we need to call this function page transitions so let's call the function let's go actually we also need to link this JavaScript file we're going to do script script and then we're gonna do source and then up to js and then let's save let's save everything and then go to the page inspect 
and then when we click this button hopefully a class should should appear on whatever button we've clicked on and then it's going to get rid of this active button here okay that's the start we have an error but we're going to so it, it didn't work so when i click the class is off but it's not working let me inspect what's going on cannot read properties of a undefined class name okay i'm pretty sure it's the, this one this keyword class name dot replace okay something is wrong class list oh this is not class it's supposed to be class name not list okay so let's save this uh, hopefully it should work click nothing happens we have an error again undefined hmm that's weird current btn class name replace active btn so you just need to make sure let me double check maybe just double check to see if the namings are correct i'm just going to copy and paste and replace everything Query select all oh. actually but I think the naming is correct. Okay, let's try to figure out what's going on. Undefined. Ah, oh, current button. Active button. Okay, the the class naming is correct. Document query selector all. I don't get what what's undefined here. um i just realized something i didn't i didn't find the error but i'm not supp uh, supposed to use an arrow function here i'm pretty sure i'm supposed to use a regular function i'm gonna do function like that instead of uh because the, this keyword doesn't exist in uh, in an arrow function okay so it only exists uh, on the regular function Oops, what did I click? Okay, so uh, let me just double check if I'm recording. Only right after I stopped the video, that's when I realized that I've used the arrow function. Okay, so when I go to console, okay, everything works fine. So now it's uh, <laughs> it's working as expected. Only, so don't use arrow functions for the, if you want to use the this keyword, it doesn't exist in arrow functions, okay? So, so now let's uh, let's move on to the next step. To the next step. So for the next stage, let's start uh, actually doing the content. But to be able to do that, we need to be able to cycle between the sections. Okay. So now we've done the active class for the button. So now we need to do the content. So uh, each button is going to have something called a dat data ID, and then this data ID. So when I click the button, it's going to look for a section with this ID. So in this case, it's going to look for the about section with uh, an ID of about, portfolio, about, portfolios, blogs, and contact. So make sure you add the data ID next to the, next to the, uh, con to the class, after the class. And then here, I'm going to also add a data ID. So this one is going to be uh the the header so this one is going to look for the header actually we can do main or home it's up to you home okay 
So I'm gonna give the IDs, so do ID. Uh, so this one is gonna be home. So give the corresponding ID, make sure this ID matches the data ID here. So for the home, the first one, the first button is gonna be home, the second one is about. About, uh, so this section, about section, I'm gonna do ID. ID, so this one is gonna be about. And then this third one, ID port folio and then ID uh, this one is going to be blogs and then finally we have contact ID contact okay so these IDs are going to help us uh, navigate through these sections okay so now that we have those IDs um, uh, we've done the sections. Uh, let's let me inspect the section. They are there, but they're right on top of each other. If I go main, uh, these sections they are there. Uh, actually, we need to uh, style these uh, with different background colors. Uh, okay, you know what we. Uh, I'm gonna give them different background color, background color, slate blue, so you can see the difference. But we don't see them yet because there's a scale, scale is zero, and uh, actually translate is minus 100%, so they're off screen, and the scale is zero as well, so you don't see them yet. So we just need to do a little bit of JavaScript, so we'll be able to see them later on. All right. Uh, it's just for you to see these uh, sections. Okay, I'm going to save this. So we don't uh, see these sections. So now we just need to uh, do the active class. So when we click each button, it's going to do an active class. Okay, so the active class is going to be uh, the active class is going to be added to the sections. Okay. So here I'm gonna say uh, sections active class. Okay, so we have all sections. We are selecting all of the sections here. So this section is targeting. So this the main content here is the body. Okay, so the body. That's the all of the section. It's like a parent of all of the sections. So I'm gonna say. All section, all of the sections. Dot for each. So I'm going to loop over whatever is inside the the body. Okay. So in this case, all of the sections are inside the body. So it's gonna take in a callback function. I'm gonna say section. Okay. So we have section. Actually, we need to add an event listener. We will loop through later add event listener and then when I click inside uh, once I click okay so yeah you can do a callback function here and then we're, we're going to take an event so the E is for the event okay so I'm going I'm just going to say E control log here I'm gonna say E dot target okay so I'm gonna save Let's go to the console. Let, let me just click anyway. So it's not doing anything yet because the sections are outside. Okay, so you won't you won't you won't see it. But now it's targeting whatever element of it's console logging any element that I've clicked on, as you can see. And then it's showing the class or whatever element and the the name of whatever element I've clicked on. Okay, so we're just adding event list now to whatever element, but in, in this case, we want to target these buttons here. Okay, so uh, let's get rid of this. So in here, I'm going to say const id, and then we're going to say is equals to e dot target dot data set data set like this, and then dot id. So the data set is like referring to whatever 
I've clicked on whatever element I've clicked on the target, we're going to target the data set. So the data set is this one here. We, we gave a data ID here. So whatever element that I've clicked on, I'm going to target the data set, whatever element I've clicked on, especially these buttons, I'm going to target the data set for that. So I'm going to get uh, take the names of these data sets here. Okay. So that's what this is referring to. So I'm, I'm like taking the data set and put it into a variable called ID. Okay. So I'm going to say if, uh, if ID is because true, or if we have an ID, whatever, uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to first remove the remove selected selected from the other button. Okay, like that, something like that. So yeah, I'm going to do section buttons, which is the container of the buttons. But I want to look through each individual button inside. Okay, so to do that, we're just going to do with for each. So each button. So for each button, I'm going to do btn each button, the class list, class list, and then I'm going to remove the class of active button, active actually, active, active button is a different class for the styling of the buttons, but this is a class referring to, so this active class, we're going to use this for the sections, not the active styles like this. So this, this is a different thing, different class name. Okay, so we're looking through the button, each individual button. Uh, if we're not clicking the button, we're just getting, getting rid of the class. And then we're just going to say E dot target. And then uh, we're going to say class list. Uh, we just want to add the class to whatever button that we've clicked on. So here I'm just going to do uh, E dot target dot class list. Uh, the E is going to, is coming from here, the event. Okay. So we're going to add a class of active. Okay, so now that we've added the class, uh, I'm also going to hide uh, other sections, other sections as well, as we're doing it. So we, we, we've done that already, but like, I'm just uh, gonna do that sections. So th this, we're not seeing the sections yet, but when I click the active button, I want to be able to set the, the display and the trans translate translation back to default. Okay. So I'm going to do sections. I'm going to do dot for each section. So if you remember the sections is coming here from the section. So each every section I'm, I'm looking through every section. Okay. So for every section, I'm going to say section. Uh, I'm going to section the class list uh, do remove uh, it's like the same thing that we've done with the uh, the button I'm gonna say active all right so uh, that's pretty much it actually down here I'm just gonna do one more thing const element element and then here we're just going to do document document and then we're going to do dot get element by d element by id and then we're going to pass in the id so whatever id is coming from the data set is going to be inside the element 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 variable we're saving the id so remember here we give we gave the id here ID about portfolio. So whatever element we're on, we're going to pass in the ID. And also, uh, this data ID is it's linked to the to these IDs. So whatever element we're on, and then we're targeting the ID. So now we're just going to say element. You can name, uh, and then we're going to do class class list, and then we're also just going to add active. Okay, so now I'm gonna save. Let's see what we have. So let's inspect to see our sections. So home, hopefully, should have an active class header. 
we've added this manually but when i click something else hopefully it should get rid of this and put it somewhere else when i click yep it got rid of the active class from the header now this one is active this about when i click this one is active now it's getting rid of the existing class on other okay so now we can only use the active on one element but we don't see our sections here they are there but we don't see them because they are hidden we just need to uh, display those uh, sections so I'm gonna go um, under section sec 5 I'm just gonna do dot active so we're styling the active um, display block so we only want to display whatever element is active okay now let's save so now the header is active it is a color of green it's working okay so everything works we can cycle through the sections okay but these sections they're not animating no uh, no that's not what we want so down here i'm just gonna say animation i'm gonna say scale anim so that's the name of the animation. The duration is going to be one second. And then we're going to have an ease in and ease out. So I'm going to do an animation down here. I'm going to do it keyframes. And then this one is going to be scale anim. So that's the name of the animation, scale anim. And then I'm going to do at 0%. What do I want is 0? Transform, translate, translate. Transform, tr transform, translate. What's going on? Zero percent. Translate Y. Okay, so for the Y here, it's the same thing we've done before. Scale zero. Okay, so it's only going to have two states the ten percent, zero percent, and the 100% okay whoops my mouse is broken by the way it double clicks when I don't need to so when I try to do a single click it double clicks automatically I need to get a new mouse okay so here it's just resetting the values to back to 0 and the scale back to 1 okay let's save this hopefully it should work now as you can see we can scale okay we can skip but that's not the effect we're looking for uh we are looking for scale y okay so we're looking for scale y okay we don't want to scale everything so we want only to scale the y-axis so we want the content to come from you know up as you can see now we can you know do those effects okay that's it for the <laughs> effects now we can uh scrub through the sections i'm going to take a break now and then i'll be back in a bit i'm just gonna drink some water and then we'll continue where we left off okay i'm back so now let's uh do the header so let's start with the header do the content inside the header and then we'll move on to other sections so for the header uh, we're only mainly going to have some images and stuff so here I'm going to do a class header content so the header content is gonna have a left and a side and a right left header and then we're gonna have the right header so the right side so because we're going to display grid Okay, so for the left side, it's there's there isn't nothing anything here. It's just an image. We're going to do header shape, and then below that, we're going to do uh, an image. It's inside image div img img hero. That's the image name, and then we we'll go to the right side. So here is just a bunch of text. So we're gonna have h1 dot name. I'm just gonna paste in the name. 
Okay, so this pan is surrounding the name because I want to color this color, the name, blah, only this bit, a different color. That's why I'm surrounding with this pan. Okay, so this pan also have a class of name. I don't know why I have the same. I'm gonna get rid of the span class, class name. I'm just gonna surround it like this, like span. Okay, below that, uh, we're gonna have a P, a P tag. Ooh, I'm just gonna paste in some text as well. I'm sorry about the I'm sorry about the background noise. My mates are playing a video game. I'm gonna do a dot main main btn. Okay, so that's an anchor tag. So it's going to have an icon, and it's going to have two spans. This the first span is going to, be, to have a class. Of btn text okay so it's, it's just text uh, the text is gonna say download CV you can put any text that you want so this is an anchor tag it's a link you can make it go somewhere to, or to Google Drive wherever you're saving your CV or whatever you can send it there and then another span is going to have an icon for the download icon coming from font awesome Okay, so now that's it for the header content. We just need to do the styles. I'm gonna get rid of this green color here. So that was just for testing purposes for you to see, to show you that the sections are working. I'm just gonna get rid of this. Get rid. I'm gonna get rid of everything. Okay, so now we're left with the default colors. So now let's start doing the header. So for the header content, uh, after the controls, I'm just gonna say header content and the content, and then I'm gonna do another duplicate this. I'm gonna say um, in the content components. So some components that we might want to reuse, we're gonna put them down here. Okay, so now I'm gonna target header content header content so for the header content we're going to do a display of a grid we're going to put a uh, two column grid grid template columns we're going to do repeat we're going to have two columns and then one fr so that all going to be equal so when i save so now we have two columns when i inspect this as you can see we have two columns one two okay so that's what we want and then uh yeah the height is going to be 100 percent we have the height and then we're going to target the left header left header so for that uh, display flex align items align items align items to center okay and then position is going to be relative because we want to position absolute a shape that's going to be behind our image so this image, let's save this, it's gonna have a shape behind it. Okay, so that's why we're doing the person relative, the parent container. So the shape, we've named that shape H. Shape, if you remember, that's the header shape. Uh, the shape is gonna have a transition that we've been using before. I'm just gonna paste in the transition and then a height of 100% with 65%. Background color is going to be var, it's going to be secondary color, it's going to be the background color, and then position absolute, and then we're going to do left zero, top zero, top zero, and then we're going to do z index. I want it to be behind the image of one, minus one actually, I want it to be behind, and then I'm going to do clip path. So a clip path, I'll show you what it, what it does. I'll just paste in the code now and then I'll show you. So this is the clip path. These are the values we're using for the clip path. It's like uh, altering this shape. So to do that, we can do clip path generator. And then we can generate kind of uh, a clip path. For example, we want this uh, trapezoid. 
trapezoid the name is kind of confusing to read and then we can you know generate the shape that we're looking for and then we can just copy this code and then you can paste it wherever on whatever shape you want to customize so in this case these are the these are the values that i'm using and then after that after the shape i'm going to target the image so for the image i'm going to give it a border radius so the border radius is going to be var i'm going to do md i can't remember the border radius small 2 so i'm using the border radius small 2 is a variable okay I'm gonna do width and height. So width is gonna be ninety percent. Uh, height hundred percent. Height ninety percent. Width sixty eight percent. And then a background color. Background color is gonna be var. So the background color is gonna be black. That's gonna be the background color. And then the transition. We want the Im to have a transition as well. We've used this transition multiple times. And then I'm gonna target the image. Inside the image container, we have an image, the actual image. Uh, width and height is going to be set to 100%. Okay, and then object fit to cover so it doesn't stretch out. Object fit to cover. So this image is not going to stretch out. Uh, we also want to transition this image again. Uh, copy this transition. We're going to reuse, the, you can put that in the variable so you don't have to copy and paste like this. And then we want this image to be gr in a grayscale for. So I'm going to say filter, grayscale, and then I'm going to put the gray grayscale to 100%. And then when we hover, uh, when we hover the image and hover, so this is the beauty of SAS. We can nest components, uh, HTML elements, and then we can say filter, uh, grayscale, zero. Okay, let's save. Let's see what we get. Okay, so when we have the image is changing color. All right. Uh, just gonna get rid of these. So now, yeah, the image is changing color. So now let's go to the right side. So on to the right side. Uh, it's mainly. So we have left header. I'm gonna collapse the left header. I'm gonna say right header. Okay, so for the right header, I'm gonna do display flex. Dis uh, display flex flex direction to column because I want everything to be in a column direction. Okay, and then just for content to center. And then padding right. Uh, it's going to put a large value here, 18 RAM. I think that works. Name. And then font size. So for the name is the main title. I'm gonna make it bigger. Okay. And then I'm gonna target this pan inside it. So there's a span in there. So this pan is gonna have a color, a different color. The color. This color is gonna be a secondary color. Va secondary. So var secondary color, so that's the color for that. And then after the name, we have a paragraph. I'm gonna give the margin, top and bottom is gonna be 1.5 RAM. And then left and right is gonna be zero. And then after that, I'm gonna give it a line height. So line height is the spacing of lines of text. So the line height is gonna be sort of like something like two RAM. Then I'm gonna save, let's see what we get. So there it is. Looks nice, so we just need to start this button. So to start the button, we're going to reuse this button so it's an independent component. So I'm going to say dot main btn. Okay, so this main btn actually, it's I think it's wise to put it into a container. Dot btn container. Like that. Okay, so now we can uh, try, to, we can start styling the main button. Okay, so uh, this button is gonna have a lot of styles. Okay, so border radius is gonna be thirty pixels. Wanted to be nicely rounded, not th not twenty, but thirty. Okay. Um, font size. We're gonna do color. 
inherit and then I'm going to do font weight it's going to be 600 I want the text to be thick okay and then I'm going to do position of relative and then I'm going to give it a border with one pixel and the color of secondary that's the border I'm going to do display flex and align everything to center okay and then I'm going to say overflow to hidden okay so inside the button we have btn text to have btn text and then I'm just going to give it a padding top and bottom zero two rem left and right okay so in the button we also have a bit we also have dot btn we have the icon okay btn icon so if you don't remember the class names this one btn icon okay so the btn icon is going to have a color of the green color secondary and then center everything using flex okay so we've done that over and over so sometimes i'm just going to have to copy and paste so to send everything is just display flex align item center just for content center so padding while rem so it's like spacing around i'm gonna save let's see what we got so there's our button but it's filling in the entire width because we're using flex on the parent container so to, to get rid of this effect we can do btn con btn container if you remember we put in the parent container called btn con here there it is btn con we're just gonna do display flex on that display flex and then I'm going to say align self I'm pretty sure flex start um, yeah like that so now 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 we need to hover and bring in uh, something here when we hover and bring in like a shape that similar to our button so we're going to use a, a pseudo element a before pseudo element we we'll say end before and then we're going to say content to an empty string so we can start this uh, to whatever styles we desire percent absolute top zero zero and then right is going to be zero right zero and then uh, we're going to do transform translate x so we're going to take the shape away from the button minus 100 percent is going to go like to this side away from the button minus 100 percent uh we're also going to do the transition i'm just gonna paste in the transition and then i'm gonna do z index we want it to be behind the text of the button minus one okay so now this shape uh, it's there, but it doesn't have a width, height, anything defined. So I'm going to say and hover. When I hover the button, hover the button, I'm going to target the before pseudo element. And what do I need to, what, what do I want to happen? I'm going to put your width and height to 100%. And then the set a background color to the secondary color okay so now when i inspect let me inspect this let's look for the before it's there the before pseudo element is there but remember we are translating on the x-axis minus 100 percent so we need to bring it back to the default position which is zero okay when we have and then when we are not hovering it's going to go back to away from the button so it's doing a weird <laughs> it's doing uh, this effect from the wrong direction so it's it's not minus it's actually 100% because we're going 100% uh, on the positive value minus is gonna go negative okay so I wanted to I meant positive so it's coming from the right side now so it sees but yeah there it is I think we need to add a transition somewhere 
in here too. We need a transition here as well. So I'm gonna save. Save, it's gonna, I don't know, it's glitching. Sometimes it glitches. It's not doing it. Before, transition. Oh yeah, I think in the hover, that's when we need, we need the transition, let's see. It's not doing it. If it doesn't, it does, if it doesn't work, it doesn't. Oops, not in the icon. Okay, it doesn't matter. It works. Okay, so now what we need to do is go on to the next section, which is the about section. This about section, it's a, <sighs> it's a, <laughs> it's just, I just say it's too much. So much content there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the about. About, let me check how long I've been recording. I've, I'm so tired. I've recorded this video like a couple of times and then I made an error, which was too bad. I couldn't even edit out, so. Now I'm gonna go to the about section. So on to the, I'm gonna collapse the controls, about. So in the about, I'm gonna create a new div called main title. So we want to be able to reuse this title of two. So this is the, like a title with a span inside. It's like the main title. So we have about me, and then we have a span covering the me. Okay, so we want to color this differently. So if we're surrounding something with span, it means we're going to style that, diff that's that particular element differently. Okay, so in the independent components, so we finish the button. Now we need to do main title. All right, so for the main title, uh, it's just uh, text align to center, text align to center, and then now uh, we're going to target the H2, the header, position relative, and then we're going to do text transform uppercase, transform uppercase, and then we're going to do um, font weight, font size first, for RAM, font weight. It's gonna be 700. And then that's it for now. Let's tag the spans. So for this pan, I'm gonna do color. It's gonna be va, it's gonna be a secondary color. Okay, so after that, we're gonna target BG. BG text. So the BG text is gonna have position of absolute. It's gonna be like behind the main text. I'm gonna say top 50% and then we're gonna do left 50% as well. And then we're going to do color, a gray color and then a transition. Okay, I'm just gonna paste in. So transition is usual, Z index minus one. I want it to be behind the text. Okay, and then the font weight 800. So this uh, transform translate minus 50% minus 50%, it means we want to center something, okay? And then the font size is gonna be 6.3 RAM. Okay, let's save this, let's see what we got. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so about me, and then here it says my stats in the background. Okay, so now we have the main title, the big title. Uh, now let's do dot about content. So it's like a div that's gonna contain everything. About container, container. And then I'm gonna have uh, a left container, left about and the right about. Left and right.
okay so uh we're gonna have an h4 in the paragraph i'm just gonna paste this so on the left about okay that's what we're starting with h4 and a paragraph h4 is a heading okay and then uh, I'm, I'm going to copy that button again the button that we've used in the header okay so below below the paragraph i'm going to put that button the button container the main button okay i'm just reusing that button i'm going to save this so there it is so we're reusing this same button over and over again i think that's good okay so on the right side uh, right about i'm going to collapse this button and then i'm going to collapse this paragraph and then I'm gonna be left with the right about. So in here, I'm just gonna say dot about item. Okay, so the about item is gonna have a class of dot abt text. Okay, so in here, we're just gonna have a p, p dot large text. Okay, I'm gonna say maybe 650 or 560 plus projects. Okay, so here I'm just gonna paste in another paragraph, the class of small, small text. And then we're going to the new run, line, beer, it means break, break the line, go to the new line. And then, yeah, we're just breaking the text. Okay, so th that's it for that. So mainly, on the right about we are just going to have like a a grid okay so i'm gonna go in dependent components i'm gonna say here about okay so in here i'm gonna say about container so in the about container, I'm gonna do display, display grid, then grid template columns. I'm gonna say repeat. I'm gonna have two columns, uh, two and then one fr. They're all going to have equal sizes. And then I'm gonna do padding top and padding bottom of. I'm just gonna paste in this, so it's a no-brainer. Padding top 3.5 padding bottom 5 ram right about okay so on the right about it's also going to be a grid okay display grid then grid template columns so this one is going to be to have the same thing uh, repeat two columns one fr like that and then uh, below that we're going to do grid gap so it's like spacing between grid items, grid gap, we're going to do two RAM. So that's like the spacing between two items. Okay. Now let's save. Let's go there. So that's the about item. There it is. The right about item. Uh, we just need to keep starting. Okay, so we're going to do dot about item. Uh, I'm gonna give it a border, one pixels, one pixel, and a border radius and a transform and a uh, shadow, the ones we've been using before, one pixel and a color of gray. Okay, so and hover. When we hover this, when we hover, I'm just gonna say cursor to default. Okay, and then I'm gonna say transform, translate. I want to translate y minus 50 minus uh, minus 5 pixels minus 5 pixels but I want to have and then it goes up so that's the kind of effect I'm looking for and then the border I'm going to change the border color from primary to secondary and then the box shadow I'm just going to increase the intensity the opacity okay so from open 1 to open 3 2 okay I'm going to save this Go to the about section. So there it is. So now we have a border surrounding you. When we hover, it turns green. Okay, so below that, uh, below the hover, 
uh, we're going to do the about text the about text okay so padding padding 1.5 RAM uh, now we're going to do this display flex display to flex and then uh, we're also going to change the direction to column all right so now we're going to look for large text so the large text i'm just going to change the font size to 3 rem font weight to 700 and then uh, we're also going to change the color the color to va secondary secondary color okay and then now we're going to target the small text for, for the small text, I'm just going to have padding left of 3 RAM. 3 RAM, and then I'm going to do position of relative, and then text transform. Text transform, I'm going to do uppercase. So I want the text to be in uppercase, and then I'm going to do font size 1.2 RAM. And then the color is going to be gray, and then late letter spacing letter spacing I want these to be two pixels and then end I'm going to give it a before pseudo element so it's going to be like a small line okay with the position of absolute I'm just going to paste in the code for that so the content empty string percent of absolute left zero top 15 pixels with two RAM high two pixels I'm going to save this okay so there it is so this is the before pseudo element the literal line here, I'm going to inspect this. So there it is. Okay, so this is the grid where we have two columns here. So we need uh, three more objects here for us to have like four items. So we can uh, clone these grid items here. You can uh, about item, you can clone this three more times one, two, three save and then just change the data to whatever data fits your need so there it is so now we have more items for me to change every item here i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna paste in the items that i've changed the data already so i don't want to waste your time changing the information about these items i'm just gonna paste in all of the items with data done to them already okay so there they are I've like sort of already filled in the the data. So now let's go to the left side. Okay, so this is the right about. And then we're gonna do dot left about. So left about is just there isn't much in there. So we're gonna do padding right. Padding right is gonna be five rem. Five rem, and then we want to target a p tag. Line height. So the line height for this p tag, I'm gonna set it to two rem as well. And then we're gonna do padding top and bottom is gonna be one rem. One rem, and then uh, the color is gonna be gray one. Okay, so like that. And then I'm gonna target the h4. It's just putting into uppercase the text, the h4. And then the container of the button. Uh, actually, I don't need to target the container of the button. Just save. Everything should be nice already. There it is. So everything looks nice. The about. So now we just need to add more, more stuff below here. So we have like progress bars and the timeline stuff. So let's just do that now. So let's go to the HTML. I'm going to collapse the the about container. I'm going to collapse that. So now I just want to sort of like add uh, the stats. The I'm going to do about stats about stats. Okay. So in here. Um, 
in the bus starts nothing much nothing much is going on here just an h4 saying my skills and then uh, i'm gonna create uh, a class called progress progress bars it's a div program uh, progress bars and then another div called progress bar progress bar okay so that's another class in there we have a title called p progress title okay so that's a p progress title i'm gonna say html 5 for this one okay and then below that uh we're gonna have dot progress container okay so in there uh we're going to uh we're going to have like the progress text p dot prog prog text so this is the text uh it's going to be like 80 percent or 90 it's up to you what whatever width or whatever percentage of your skill so in this case i can i'll just say maybe 90 percent uh that's like a p tag and then below that i'm gonna have a class dot progress so this is the actual progress bar and then in there it's gonna have a span and then the class for this span is going to be html okay so that's that for the so this is the progress bar item we can duplicate this many times as many depending on how many progress bars you want to do okay so now let's just go to the styles so about container after that I'm just gonna say dot about stats about stats so here I'm just gonna do padding bottom to 4m because I want a bit of spacing I'm gonna say progress progress bars okay so I'm just gonna do a display grid we've done that uh, two columns and then below that I'm gonna target the progress bar like that uh, here I'm just gonna do display flex flex direction to column okay I want them to be one after another so that's why we're using the column and then I'm gonna select the progress title prog title here I'm just gonna give it you know a text transform text transform to uppercase so I'm gonna put it into uppercase font weight I'm gonna put it to 500 okay so after the prog progress title I'm gonna say progress progress container the progress con class display flex align items to center so in there we have a prog text as well prog text so the prog text is gonna have a, just a gray color okay now let's save and see, let's see what we have so far okay so there it is so i want next to this text here to have a progress bar okay so something is missing here my skills okay no not nothing is missing we just need to style this h4 okay so now uh we just need to let me check h4 start title ah okay so we have a class for start title for the h4 i'm gonna say start start title okay it's not there okay we need to start that later okay so now uh we need to do the progress bar now so we have the progress text after that we have the progress so the actual progress i'm gonna say width width 100 so for this one height it's gonna be 
for five frame that's for the height and then the background color I'm gonna put a position of relative because oops save this all right uh, let's see what we got so there it is so th that's our progress bar but we need something also inside to show the progress the actual progress okay so that's how we have that span inside that uh, inside the progress so so the span is going to be responsible for filling in the width so this span is going to have a position of absolute that's why we did position of relative here so left and top is going to be zero and then the height is going to be 100 percent okay and then the background color is going to be the secondary color the green one uh, but if I set the width here, if I say maybe width 60%, uh, as you can see, it's there. But if I want to create more items here, if I say progress bar, I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to save. When I go, as you can see, they all have the same width. I want them to have like different width according to a di maybe a different programming language or something a different width so to do that um, we need to give each individual progress bar I'm gonna redo this undo okay so you see this pan it is a class of HTML so whatever language you are doing give it a class of that and then after this pan and then you target each individual language and give it a different width according to whatever data you want so in this case it's 90% okay so now it's going to be uh, it didn't save because I didn't save okay so now it's going to be 90% as you can see it's 90 and then when I do another programming language when I copy the progress bar so this is the actual progress bar that I need to copy multiple times I just need to change the class names for the progress span okay so this span I just need to change the class name and then put it to a different width so in this case uh, I'm just going to paste in the the stats that that's uh, oops I'm just going to paste in the stats okay so progress bars uh, th th so there they are so now I've done the progress bars of camera so now we should have like six different pro uh, progress bars okay there they are so, but now there's something missing look look this progress bar progress bars they have uh, different class names okay so I'm just gonna copy those class names here and give them different width so here we've done the HTML already I'm just gonna paste in HTML CSS JavaScript so make sure your width so I've put 90, so this one should be 90% actually it's 80 for me I've put HTML to 80 and then the rest of the classes it's up to you what you decide to do, do with them so as you can see now we have different now we have different progress bars so it's only a matter of giving a, a different class name to a different progress bar because we're using a grid okay so each progress bar you can give it a different class name you can actually do as many pro progress bars as many as you want it's you're not limited to six because it's, it's a grid right so you can do as many as you want as many as you want it's up to you okay so now uh, let's do this title here uh, what did we name this title uh, I'm going to collapse the progress bars so we see what we are looking for so the, it's called stats so it's a uh, it's actually start start title okay so this start title I want this to be independent I want it to be outside of this container I'm just gonna go outside I'm just gonna do that down here 
I'm going to say text transform to uppercase. Then I'm going to give it a font size of 1.4 rem and then text align to center. And then I'm going to do a uh, padding. Top and bottom is going to be uh, 3.5 rem. 3.5 left, uh, left and right is going to be zero. And then position of relative because I want to create a before suit element inside it. So I'm going to say before. So you know the drill before we've done this before. I'm going to say content, set content to an empty string. And then left 50, I'm just going to set some properties here. Left 50%, top 0%. I'm going to give it a background color of gray. And then I'm going to center this on the X axis. So I'm going to say transform, translate X and then minus 50% to center this on the X axis. Okay, now I'm going to go to the, okay, so now we have a title of my skill. Okay, but we need a border. Actually, I think we need a border. So we can uh, give uh, this title, maybe a border, a border top or something. I don't know. Yeah, let's do a border. I think that's that's the better way to do it. Actually, not a border. So this before suit element is responsible for that. Uh, content. So we just need to give this a width. Width is there. Position of absolute. Let me inspect to see why it's not showing. Inspect. Before suit element. It says it's there. Transform translate x. Left fifty percent. Hmm. I don't know why the width height background color. Oh, I think this there's something wrong with the background color. Background. Nope, it's not showing still. Okay, content, empty string, position relative. <laughs> I have no idea why it's not showing. Save everything again. I'm going to inspect. interesting uh, let me try to redo the background color still is not working I think I've done something wrong somewhere and before so check your naming Title. I'm just trying to figure out why the. Let me see if I have this variable. Oh, yeah, it's, it's there. Oh, okay, let's do something else. Uh, I'll figure out. I'll figure out later what's going on why it's not working so let's do something else so now we need to do, do the timeline so i was uh, wa i wanted to put like a line here on top of the title but for some reason it's not showing uh, i'll try to figure out why it's, it's not showing later on uh, let's focus on the so above stats i'm gonna collapse so now we need to do the timeline so for the timeline, I'm just going to 
say dot timeline okay so for the timeline we're just going it's it's going to be a grid as well same same as we same stuff we've been doing so it's going to be a grid and um, we're going to have two columns of the grid so we're going to have a timeline timeline item okay so it's a grid item so timeline item so in the timeline I, uh, timeline item I'm going to say dot timeline uh, icon so we're going to have an icon as well and then the icon is going to be like a briefcase icon I'm going to put that you can go to font or some and look for any icon that you're looking for and then p dot tl timeline duration and then here you can put like a duration of when you started working for a company and stuff blah 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 and then we're just going to have an h5 with a span inside and then uh, a paragraph with some random lorem some text okay that, that's it that's it for the timeline item that's pretty much it uh, okay we just need to uh, add a title above the timeline here we can just say um, my timeline okay so let's save let's see what we got so there it is so my timeline so we just need to this is a timeline item to do a grid for this timeline item okay so to do that uh, we just need to go to the styles main here I'm just gonna say timeline okay so dot timeline I'm gonna say display grid uh, two columns we've been doing this so I'm not gonna waste your time rewriting and then I'm gonna say dot timeline timeline item so for the timeline item I'm gonna say a position of relative because I'm, I'm going to position absolutely the icon padding left padding left is going to be 3 RAM padding left 3 RAM and then a border of 1 pixel border left so I'm, I'm going to give it a border left of 1 pixel with the color of gray 5 and then I'm going to target the TL icon the individual icon the actual icon I'm going to say percent of absolute and then I'm going to say left minus 27 pixels you can play around with this value to find whatever value suits your need okay I'm going to save to show you what I mean so I'm going to I'm going to inspect so this is the TL icon okay I haven't saved yet okay so TL icon okay so now so there is our icon okay so you can sort of play with this value with the left left value to see whatever you need okay so the minus 27 was the value that I found to be better so I'm gonna say top zero and then I'm gonna say give it a background color of secondary and then I want it to be rounded so width and height must be the same for it to be rounded and then a border radius of 50 percent to make sure it's rounded okay so that's why I did width and height as the same so there it is so we just want to center this icon using flex so display flex align items and just for content to center to center the icon okay so and then I just need to target the icon itself and then give it a font size of 1.3 RAM slightly bigger okay that's it the icon should be should be appearing nicely there it is so now we just need to uh, style this text and the title okay so after here I'm just gonna say dot TL duration duration okay so TL duration I'm gonna give it a padding and a color Padding top and bottom is going to be 0.2 RAM, left and right 0.6 RAM, and then border radius is going to be 15 pixels, 
I want it to be rounded and then display uh, it's going to be inline block okay and then uh, font size I want it to be smaller font size is going to be 0.8 RAM and then uh, we're going to do text transform uppercase uppercase and then we're just going to change the font weight to 500 something you know thicker oops okay so now just save everything so there is our timeline icon item i mean okay so we just need to do the title and the paragraph so after the timeline duration there is an h5 so the h5 is only mainly styling the padding text transform in font size just the standard stuff okay and then i'm going to target the span inside the and, and then i'm going to give it a color and the font weight and the font size just the standard normal stuff okay after after the h5 i'm going to target the paragraph i'm going to give it a color of gray using our variable color gray 2 so that's the color for that gray number two for the paragraph so i'm gonna go again so there it is everything is nicely styled so now we just need to duplicate this multiple times and then change the values so what you need to do go back and then go to the timeline item you need to duplicate the actual timeline item because we've done this display grid on this timeline two columns so we just need to duplicate uh to put more grid items one two three four five and then you just need to change in the data to whatever suits your need okay so in this case um, I'm also going to paste in some some values again because I don't want to waste your time me changing these values again and again so you can put it to whatever values that you want okay so there it is so for me I've changed all of the data I just made it random so for it to look something you know so somewhat random okay so for the line we'll come back and do that later because i don't know why it's not showing yeah i think i will take a break for now i'll see you in the next section so now it's time to work on the uh, portfolios page so this one is going to be super quick and easy so it's just like a grid um so let's go to the portfolio section okay so in this section we're going to uh put some grid items so mainly we're going to put the title we're reusing the title that we've created already and then just put change the name to my portfolio just copy the title from where we've done it before and then yeah put it there so my portfolio put the title and then when i go to the portfolio page you can see the title of my portfolio there it is so now uh, let's do the, the content so for the i'm going to have a paragraph here p with the class of portfolio text just put some text in the paragraph like uh, random text Okay, in this case I'm just going to put some random text so I'm going to say dot put portfolio portfolios something like that and then here I'm gonna say dot portfolio item so in, in portfolio item we're going to have uh, an image dot image and then img image portfolio one so we have portfolio all the way to seven the images <clears throat> and then uh, below that um, we're going to have below the image we're going to have dot hover items so when I have the portfolio item I want to display the links where you can download the project if you want if a user wants to <coughs> Okay, so I'm gonna have an H3 in there. I'm gonna say project source. So the source of the project, like the source code or something. Maybe your GitHub links. 
Okay, below that, I'm going to have a class with icons of icons. So here I'm going to have an anchor tag, a link. So each um, link is going to lead to whatever website you want to. So for example, if I say www.google.com and then I'm going to say target target, I'm going to put the target to blank. So it means open a new page. So if the target is close to blank, it's going to open a new page. And then in there, I'm just going to add an icon. Okay, so you can put as many icons as you want. So in this case, I'm going to do GitHub. I'm going to do GitHub YouTube. Okay, GitHub YouTube and uh, GitHub YouTube uh, Behance. That's the icons I'm going to be using. So now we have one grid item. So we we need like six grid items or more, whatever it depends. It's up to you. So we're going to have like a grid with three columns because we want to have three grid uh, three grid items per row. Okay. So let's go to the styles. I'm going to say portfolios. So <clears throat> that that's that's marking my where I'm going to start doing the portfolio. So I'm going to say dot portfolio text, port text, portfolio text. I'm going to give it a padding. Padding top and bottom is going to be to RAM, left and right zero. And then text align. Text align is going to be the center. And then after that, I'm going to target the portfolios, portfolios, the container. And then I'm going to do a display grid. We've been doing this for ages, uh, grid template columns, and then we're going to do repeat, and then we're going to have three and one FR. Okay, so we're going to have three columns, and then grid gap, spacing between grid items. So it's going to be two RAM as usual. And then I'm going to target the uh, margin top. I'm going to give it a margin top of three RAM, and then I'm going to do dot portfolio item the actual individual item portfolio item i'm going to do position of relative and then i'm going to target the image inside inside the portfolio item i'm going to give it a width of 100 percent okay and the height of 300 pixels and then i'm going to do object fit to cover and then border radius border radius is going to be 15 pixels 15 pixels okay and then below that below the image i'm going to say dot hover items hover items okay so with actually before i do that i'll just save 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 okay so there it is so it lo it's looking nice i say it's looking nice so the image, we just need to keep going. Uh, the border radius, for some reason, it's, it didn't apply. Uh, border radius, 15 pixels. Uh, we also need to put, I think we need to put this also on the item itself. I believe, nope, it's not working. Let me inspect this. Border radius. doesn't seem to be working what a ray border oh border radius okay we'll fix it later so now on the have items portfolio item let me just double check the class name so make sure the class name is Okay, that's that's okay. Have items with one hundred percent height, one hundred percent. The background color is going to be the primary, and then the position is going to be absolute. So when we have a <clears throat> okay, so it's not showing yet. Okay, uh, border radius fifty percent as well. Border radius, 15 pixels, 
Okay, so they have items position relative. Let me just double check. Inspect. Oh, it's have items. Have uh, I? What is it? Like that. Okay, so there is our have item. That's this. This is this green color here. So we're going to center all of this content here on the center. So you already know how to do this. We're going to use flex, uh, flex uh, align items to center and flex direction to column. Okay, like so. And then let's see what we got. It's loading. It's, it's compiling the styles. Sometimes it does this. Okay, so there is uh, all of the items are aligned. So now we just need to style the individual icons. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to start with an H3, the H3, the heading inside the inside there. I'm just going to increase the font size and give it a color and a margin. So the font size is going to be 1.5 RAM and a margin bottom of 1.5 RAM. Okay, and then I'm, after that, after the H3, I'm going to target the icons. I'm going to say I'm gonna I'm going to align the items as well. Display flex to center, and then the icon, the individual icon. I want to give it a background color of the primary. So width and height has to be same for us to be to round to make sure it's rounded. Border radius fifty percent. Width and height must be the same. So whatever width and height you put, make sure it's the same for us to make sure the icons are nicely rounded. So for example, like this, the icons are rounded. So we just need to center this in the middle with flex okay so you already know how to do that and then we're going to give it a margin left and right for us to space them and then cursor is going to be pointer and then we're going to do a transform transition i mean a transition that's it for that okay so there it is so on hover we might want to actually i want to change the font size of this icon these icons so i'm going to target the eye so you can inside the icon i'm going to target the eye change the font size and the color to white and then give it a margin left and right of one like so okay so when we hover this icon i'm going to say end hover what do we want to happen on hover, I just want to change the background color of the icon and the actual icon eye tag. Okay, so it's just changing the color. So let's see. Okay, so now it's changing the color. So I don't want to display this by default. Okay, I want to only display this when I hover this uh, grid item. So in here, to, I'm going to get rid of the, to get rid of it. So to get rid of it, I'm going to uh, say, I'm going to say, uh, go up, up, up the H3. I'm going to give opacity of zero, opacity of zero. It means I'm uh, like hiding, but it's still there. I'm hiding the visibility, opacity of zero. And then I'm also going to do scale zero, transform, transform scale zero. Okay, and then uh, let's do also a transition, the one we've been using. Okay, so um, I want to, on hover, a grid item, I want to re return this to default uh, values, opacity and the scale. Okay, so to do that, uh, I'm just gonna scroll down. I'm just gonna say uh, up here outside, I'm just gonna say portfolio, portfolio item, Okay, and hover. So when I have the portfolio item is the grid item, and then I'm gonna say dot hover items. I want them to opacity. I'm gonna set that to one scale, also to one. Okay. So let's see what we got. Okay, so when I hover, it's it's showing, but I just need to fix this image thing, the image problem. I don't know why it's not working for the 
let me just inspect the image image width 100% uh, height 300 pixels okay so that's the parent of the image and then the image itself I'm gonna set the image itself height to 100% something fishy is going on if you don't set the height object fit oh it's contained it's supposed to be cover it's my fault uh, I'm gonna say for contain contain object fit is supposed to be cover so it's gonna cover the whole grid item All right, so now it's covering the whole grid item. So ex everything works as, as expected. So now um, what we need to do is just duplicate these uh, portfolio items. Okay. We can duplicate them by... You can also actually, you know, animate the, the rotate, but I'm not going to do that in this video. So let's go to the HTML. So we've d we've done display grid, uh, grid. We're displaying three, uh, three columns. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate and change the values. So we have the portfolio images. Uh, so the image you can change from portfolio one to two, three, four, four, five. Or you can use your own images if you want. So you just need, you just need to change around the values. Okay. So portfolio item. I'm gonna collapse portfolio item. And then I'm just going to duplicate this multiple times, one, two, three, four, five, as many as many times as you want. Save and then go back. We should hopefully should have more portfolios. And then you just need to change around these images as well. Okay. So yeah, I will I will leave the rest up to you. Portfolio item. Okay, I'm just undoing this. Portfolios. Okay, so I've pasted in. The d with the data changed so I've changed all, all of the images so you just need to do the same as you just need to change to your own images of your liking so I've changed the images so now yeah let's move to the next section if you remember this uh, before pseudo element was not showing it's because I forgot to do something uh, I'm gonna inspect I forgot to do position of absolute on the before pseudo element so you make sure you do position absolute and then it will show somewhere down there it is so go to the start start title title and then the content in here to position of absolute so hopefully now the line should show so now we should have a, a line there it is a line here okay so that's it for the portfolios now let's go for the blogs the blogs is kind of uh, similar to the portfolios because it's it's a grid as well. It's going to be have it's going to have uh, it's going to have three three columns. Okay, so we just need to also uh, go to the blogs portfolios. I'm going to collapse this. I'm going to go to the blogs. I'm going to say dot blogs content content that's like uh, the parent the main parent container so in there i'm going to paste in the title and then th the title just change it to my blog so we've created this title before so it's inside the header that's where actually it's inside the uh the about section that's where we first created this title here so just copy the name main title we've started this we've styled this title already so you just need to change the text okay so hopefully we should have main title in the blog section there it is my blogs okay so we have the main title so it's like the blog section so now uh, after the title I'm just gonna do dot blogs so in the blogs I'm going to do the blogs that's where I'm going to do all of the blogs 
so in the blogs I'm gonna do do dot not do <laughs> dot blog each individual blog so it's going it's, the blog is a grid item I'm going to do to be duplicating this multiple times to create multiple grid items okay so the blog I'm going to have an image uh, IMG I'm gonna say blog one okay so you can set whatever image you want to use so after that I'm gonna do, uh, do dot blog text and then in there I'm gonna have an h4 uh, you can put whatever text you desire but anything that you want and then after that we're going to have a paragraph with random text as well like that okay that's it for the blog item we just need to style this there isn't much to it we just need to style this and then we can go to the next section okay so uh, we just need to go to the styles and just get started with the blogs so after uh, portfolios portfolios and then here we're just going to do blogs section okay so here uh, we can do dot blogs so the blog is going to be a grid display so that's the parent of each individual blog grid so in here we're just going to have three columns so the standard stuff we've been doing before and then each individual blog we're going to have a position of relative and then background color is going to be gray 5 and we're going to give it a border radius of 5 pixels to make the corners uh, be rounded you know and then we're going to give it a box shadow you can use the variable or you can use this one so one pixel one pixel one pixel on the y one pixel on the x and then 20 pixels for the blur okay and then when we have uh, this blog item what do we want to happen so when we have a, I uh, want the image to sort of pop out of the block container. Uh, I'm actually also going to increase the box shadow. I'll copy this box shadow, paste, and then I'm just going to increase like the opacity of the box shadow from 0.1 to 0.3. And then uh, after that, I'm also going to transform this and then translate Y. I wanted the, the blog to go up slightly a little bit so minus 50 uh, pixels I wanted to go up minus 55 pixels and then I'm gonna apply the transition as well the one we've been using and then inside inside that when we have a I'm also going to target the image so the image filter filter I'm gonna do grayscale I'm gonna do zero okay and then uh, I'm going to do transform translate actually scale we want to scale the image I want it to be larger so one by 1.1 1 .1. so the image the normal scale is one so I want it to be slightly larger by 0.1 okay so it's like 10 larger by 10 percent I don't know yeah 10 percent okay so and then uh, we're also going to do a box shadow uh, we're going to do a box shadow for the image so the main box shadow is on the y-axis which is four pixels so we want it to show a lot of shadow uh on the y-axis okay so now uh let's save let's see what we got so far i'm gonna go to the block section oh seems like there's a glitch somewhere yep there is a glitch i don't know what happened blogs let me refresh this I don't know why it's glitching okay blogs that's that's odd let me double check the class names blogs blog item oops blogs content I don't know what's going on okay I think I know what's going on uh, go back check the classes ID so the ID blogs class oh this class name is matching our blog class name so get rid of this class name we're not, we're not gonna use it so get rid of that 
I, I don't know why this this class name didn't affect that portfolio I think you can get rid of these class names we're not gonna use them uh, let's see if it's gonna affect anything let's save yep nothing affected yep nothing affected here okay yeah so we didn't use those class names up here so just get rid of them i think we're using this about class name so leave that for now if it's affecting it uh, if it's affecting something it means we're reusing the class just get rid of it okay so now no glitches so there it is so the image sort of like pops out of the grid item like boom boom but we need to make it transition nicely smoothly so to do that yeah let's go back to the styles so after the hover effect after we finished uh, with the hover we need to now style the image outside of the hover so i'm going to do image with 100 percent and then i'm going to do height 300 pixels and then i'm going to do object fit object fit to cover to cover and then um i'm going to do i'm going to give it like corners uh on the top top right and top left i'm gonna say border radius top top uh border radius top radius top whatever border radius top top left so top left is going to be uh, so for the top left just give it like five pixels and then we're going to do top right five pixels as well so let's save let's see what we have uh, so there it is so we have a border top top right and left so there it is okay so now we just need to style the to give it a transition and uh, give the and the filter so when we have uh, the filter uh, we need to affect the filter now actually so filter 100% so here we set that filter to grayscale 0 and then here it's like 100% and then a transition to make it slow to transition slowly oops okay so it's gonna transition slowly so it's it's grayscale Okay, when we hover, it's going to go to one hundred percent uh, to go to zero. So by default, the grayscale is one hundred percent. When we hover, the grayscale is going to go to zero, which is the you know black and white. Okay, so the image sort of like pops out. Okay, so after the image, I'm gonna do dot blog text. So for the blog text. I'm gonna give it a margin, ma margin top. Actually, margin top. So for the margin top, I'm gonna do minus seven pixels. So you can play around with this value. You can try to find any value that you see fit. But for this one, I'm I've find like seven pixels, minus seven pixels, to be a good value. And then I'm gonna do a padding top and bottom. It's gonna be 1.1 RAM. Actually, padding not top and bottom around everything. So. I want to block text every padding around of 1.1 rem. Let me show you what I mean. So as you can see here, there's like spacing around the text. So that's the padding 1.1 rem. Okay. So that's that. So now let's. Uh, I'm just gonna do a border, a border top. Okay. So I'm gonna do border top like this, eight pixels. Okay. So that's the border. So when I hover, the border uh, gets covered. That's that's the effect we're looking for. And then there's like a nice shadow. Okay. Seems like when I hover the shadow on the x-axis is too much. I might want to get rid of that. Box shadow x, y, 4 pixels. So on the x, I'm going to set to a 0 on the x-axis. I don't want anything on the x. Okay. Seems it didn't make any... A lot of changes but you can always reduce the blur maybe to 15 okay so you can reduce the blur to 15 yeah I think it looks good so now uh, let's tell the, 
the text okay so now in the block uh, blocks text I'm going to target the h4 I'm just going to change the font and the color so the font and then when, when we have a when we have a I'm going to set the color to green so it's just uh, color color secondary okay like that and then the after the h4 I'm going to target the paragraph I'm just going to set the color as well color to gray gray to and then give it a line height so the spacing of the lines to rem and then we're also going to do padding bottom of one rem so just to give it a bit of spacing so now let's save okay so that's our blog item it's fully styled so what we all we need to do now is just to uh, populate the blog items okay so to do that we've been doing this uh, forever so we just need to get this grid item and populate this multiple times to whatever amount of blogs that you are looking for in this case I'm just gonna populate multiple times and change the values and the images to whatever values that suits your need so just populate this multiple times and change around the values okay and then I'm just gonna put like my own values I don't waste your time doing this on screen so I've done that now there it is so now I have different content for the blogs items okay yeah that's it for the blog items now let's move on to the contact so to the contact section we're going to have uh, two sections left and right because we're going to do some inputs okay so for the contact section go down here and then um, we're going to do the title as well we're going to put a title as usual but first I'm going to do dot contact container and then I'm, I'm going to paste in the title so the title is going to be contact uh, if you still don't know we did we did this title from the beginning in the header so we're just reusing that title component over and over just uh, changing the values okay so and then I'm going to do dot contact contact content container contact content container okay so we're going to have dot left contact and then we're going to have left and right contact left and right contact oh left this one is right contact okay so uh, let's uh, start with the left contact okay so with the left contact uh, we're going to have an h4 and a paragraph first so h4 and a paragraph so the h4 says contact me here and the paragraph just a random paragraph okay and then below that uh, we're going to have like another div code dot contact info so in the contact info it's going to have some icons a lot of icons for for the contact info okay so here I'm just gonna say dot contact item okay and then in there we're going to have an icon dot icon in the contact item and then we're going to have um, an actual icon so in here I need a location icon and then below the location I am going to say location okay I'm gonna save let's see what we have so when I go it says location see there's a location item here icon um, there's a location item icon I mean before the location text okay so I want to have multiple icons and text uh, next to it okay so to do that we just need to duplicate the contact item multiple times and change around the icons okay so in this case actually after the icon I'm gonna do a paragraph I'm gonna say London 
United Kingdom. Okay, so we're still in the contact item. So we just need to duplicate the contact item multiple times. Okay, for us to have uh, multiple multiple items. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in some contact items. I don't want to waste your time uh, doing these contact items on screen. So contact item, paste that in multiple times, change the, con uh, the icons and change the information to whatever you want. So there it is. So these are the icons that I'm using. Okay, so we've done that. So now let's do start doing the styles. I'm going to say contact contact section okay so uh, let's uh, start doing the contact so for the contact um, we're going to do display flex dot contact content container okay so we're going to do display flex we want everything to be next to each other and then padding top 3.5 RAM 3.5 RAM okay and then we're first uh, we're going to target the uh, left content so that's left contact actually contact so for the left contact I'm gonna do flex I want it to be smaller than the right one so the right one I'm gonna set that flex to one to make it cover the remaining space so now this is it's actually not smaller it's because I haven't put content on the other one so that's why it's, it looks weird at the moment okay so you know what let me put the content first so for us to see how things are progressing let me put all of the content all of the content that we need okay so below the contact item here after so after the contact info after the contact info I'm gonna put another div so this one is going to be contact 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 I cons so we want to have like some icons that are gonna lead to social to social media okay so in here I'm gonna say dot contact icon so this one is contact icons and then this one is contact icon okay like that and then I'm going to do an anchor tag that's gonna lead us to whatever platform www.facebook facebook.com oh, it depends wherever you want to go to just put a link there okay and then here I'm just gonna paste in a Facebook link and then make sure you put the target to blank if you want to open that to a new tab target to blank okay so that's the icon for Facebook I'm gonna paste in the rest of the icons. Okay, so we have Twitter and stuff. Okay, that's it for the left side. So we just need to go to the right side. So the right side is gonna have like a form. Uh, I'm gonna say form dot contact contact form form like that. Okay, so in here we're just going to have some inputs. Um, I'm gonna have a div called input control dot input control okay like that and then we're going to have two inputs the first one is input text and then we're going to it's going to be required required and then placeholder to a placeholder is going to be like your name okay so we're also going to do another input uh, you know what we can just duplicate the one that we have 
and the other one is going to be email your email okay like so so now we just need to duplicate this input control one more time actually not one more time uh, here I'm gonna get rid of email here I'm just gonna say uh, enter subject type subject I don't know enter subject subject like that and then um, I'm just gonna also do input control and then this one is gonna be text area text area and then you can leave the name blank if you want and then the columns I'm gonna do 15 and then eight rows like so okay so uh, that's pretty much it uh, we just need the button the button that we've created before I'm gonna put it in a I'm gonna put it in a class code dot submit btn I'm just gonna paste in the button that we've created before so it's called uh, main button we've done that created that button before we've used it multiple times I'm just gonna save this to see what we have Dun, dun, dun. okay so there we go that's what we got so now we just need to get started with styling this stuff so go to the styles okay so left contact uh, I'm gonna do dot right contact okay so right contact and then um for the right i'm gonna say flex three so this one flex two and, and then this one is flex three so there you go so this is occupying more space okay flex three and then margin left is gonna be something like maybe three ram Okay, and then below that I'm gonna do dot, dot input control control the input control class. Okay, I'm gonna do margin for that. Margin top and bottom is gonna be one point five rem left and right zero, and then I'm gonna target the inputs inside there. Okay, I'm gonna do border radius. 30 pixels and then I'm gonna do font weight font weight inherit font size inherit uh, font family inherit okay and then I'm gonna do a padding top and bottom is gonna be 0.8 RAM left and right is gonna be 1.1 RAM you can change these values to put values that you want Outline is going to be none. Border, I'm going to give it to none as well. Border of none. And then we just need to do a background color and a width of 100%. Background color and color of white. And then resize, we want it to be none because we don't want the form and the text area to be resized. So I'm going to put a comma and then text area as well on the text area to uh, have these tiles as well I'm gonna save save everything let's see what we have so there it is okay but I want this your name and your email to be next to each other okay so I want this to be next to each other so to do that I am going to give the input control this one another class called input control Actually, I'll just do like this input control two. <laughs> okay, so input control two after the input control. Uh, that's where I'm going to style that. Uh, I'm going to do display flex. Okay, and then I'm going to say last child, uh, the last input. The last input, I'm going to give it a margin left. Margin left of 1.5 rem the last 
child okay let's go and see what we got there it is so last child this one is going to have a margin left of 1.5 so everything looks equal like this okay so we can actually increase the, this font weight of this text to maybe something like 500 to make it more thicker or you, you can leave it like this it's up to you what you want okay oh, you can also text area you can say placeholder message here like this and then you can have like a nice placeholder everywhere if you want like this you can do a message here like that okay so that's that now uh the button we just need to you know center the button so to do the button uh after the uh after that after the input control you can do dot submit btn so it's just display flex display flex uh just for content flex start okay so let's go back there it is so our button is showing nicely so now we just need to do the left side all right so let's uh, go ahead and do the left side which is just uh, styling the text and everything so the left side what do we got we got some contact items okay so we're doing flex 2 for the left and then i'm going to target the h4 so for the h4 margin top i'm going to do one rem font size to rem and then i'm going to do text transform transform to uppercase okay after that i'm going to target the paragraph I'm going to give it a margin top and bottom one rem line line height of two rem. We've been redoing this. We should have done that into a global global style, but it's okay. Let's keep going. I'm going to do contact info. So in the contact info, we have a contact item dot contact item. If you remember the class names, so we just want to do display flex um we're doing align items to center just five content space between to space them space between uh let's see what we have so there it is uh the spacing between okay so now uh we just need to target the paragraph inside the contact item we're gonna do p uh, margin margin top and bottom is going to be point three RAM and then zero left and right and then we're going to override the existing one which using the important okay and then we're going to do padding top and bottom padding top and bottom is going to be zero and then left and right actually padding everything just padding around everything we want to reset it to zero and then we are overriding with the important keyword okay so now everything we have a point three margin top and bottom okay for each item so there's like a margin top three point three ram everything looks nice now we just need to start the icons okay so uh, after the paragraph i'm gonna say dot icon okay so for the icon i'm gonna say i'm gonna put them in a grid uh, display grid display grid and then grid template columns I'm gonna so I'm, I'm putting it in a, in a grid because I want uh, restart this oh okay it's not showing why because I've, I've used the grid already so I'm just gonna show you why grid template columns I'm gonna say 40 pixels for the first column and then one FR for the second column which is where the text is 40 pixels for the icon okay and then i'm gonna go back so the reason i, d I did a grid is because i wanted this this uh, text items 
to be in line with one another. So if it's a grid, it's going to make sure they are aligned. So when I inspect this, so as you can see, this one is a grid item. Okay, so each grid item, each uh, item is going to have uh, the first column of the grid is going to be 40 pixels, no matter what of these grid items. Each one is going to have a column, the first one of uh, 40 pixels. So hence they're going to have uh, equal spaces and they're going to live, they're going to be on the same line like that. So you, you get the idea. And then in icon, I'm going to target the eye, the icon inside there. I'm going to say display flex and then align items to center. And then I'm going to do font size. The font size, I'm going to change that to something like 1.3 RAM. Okay, so uh, there it is. So now the icons are much bigger. So now we just need to do the these icons here. And then we're done for the contact page. Okay, so write content, uh, contact, well, contact info, so contact info, after the contact info, uh, we need to do the uh, contact icon, dot contact icon, so if you forgot to, uh, to know what that is, it's the uh, contact icon, where is it, where is it, where is it, it's somewhere down here. So it's this this container here, contact icon container here. So that's what we're doing now. Okay, so now we're doing this container, uh, contact icon. So we're going to do display, flex, display flex, and then I'm going to do margin top. So for margin top, it's going to be sort of like 2 RAM. And then we're going to target the anchor tag in there, which is going to take us to external websites. Uh, we're just going to do display flex and give it a color and center everything uh, we've been doing that with flex and then to make sure it's rounded we've been doing this width and height uh, must be the same and border border radius to 50 percent okay so my i'm going to do margin top and bottom zero top and bottom 0.4 rem left and right okay and then uh, we can do the transition, the one we've been doing. Okay, and then on hover, when we hover this, uh, we just want to change the background color. And also for the icon as well, we just want to change the color to the primary color. Okay, and then after the hover, just in general, not in the hover, we want to start the eye icon. We're going to do display, flex, align items, center, just file content, center, font size, 1.3 RAM. All right, so now, there it is. So now we have a nice have animation. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, this concludes our our website now we just need to work on the dark theme light and dark mode and then we're done okay so now i'm just gonna go to the html and i'm just gonna put like an uh after the controls i'm gonna do dot i'm gonna say theme btn here i'm just gonna put like uh, an an icon for the to toggle the dark mode, light and dark mode. Okay, so theme BTN. So I just need to style that and then we're done. Uh, we just need to start the theme BTN. Okay. So, controls. Okay, so after the controls, I'm going to do dot theme btn. So here, uh, I'm going to do padding, uh, one rem, and then cursor to pointer, and then a background, width and height must be the same for us to make them rounded. So I want the button to be rounded. Okay, like that. 
and then uh, display f uh, flex we want to send everything with flex so you know that what that, that is already and then margin top and bottom is going to be 0.7 RAM and then zero left and right uh, I'm also going to paste in the box shadow you can put this into a variable so you don't have to do this and then I'm going to target the eye uh, it's only changing the font size and the color and setting the point events to none so we don't click it okay so yeah I mean you know what I've been let's see what we have oh it doesn't exist because I've been copying the wrong styles <laughs> sorry it's my, it's my it's my fault I've been uh, looking at the wrong uh, element uh, I'm gonna do top 5% uh, right 3% and then I'm gonna do width 70 pixels same as the height so we want to make sure this is rounded height okay and then I'm gonna do border radius 50% so it's going to be rounded and then I'm gonna set the background color and give it a position of fixed and then center the center with flex okay like that so case a pointer position of fixed so now it's gonna be here at the top right okay so we want to give it a, a, a box shadow as well like what we did in the text transform okay so there it is so I'm going to do when active so when I click what do I want to happen when I click the button so I'm going to do transform and then I'm going to translate on the Y so I'm going to do like minus five pix five pixels and then the is should be 0.1 second make sure it's very low not high so for, if you put the value too high you will not see the effect so for example let's, let me say 0 0.5 0 0.6 pixels not six pixels uh seconds 0 0.6 seconds when i click you won't see the effect but when i hold it takes like points it takes a lot of time to do the effect you have to hold but i want the effect to be like quick when i click so that's why i'm using 0 0.1 second to make sure like you can see the effect on click so when i click as you can see like the button is like moving or you can reduce this width uh, not the width i mean the height of uh, translation to minus three so when you click it's like you know translating okay so that's that so now we just need to do the icon so the icon is just changing the font size and the color and setting the point of to none okay so there it is so now we just need to work on the toggle so it's going to be really quick we just need to go to javascript to javascript after the sections active we can say toggle theme toggle theme and then here we're going to say const theme btn is equals to document document dot query selector dot query selector and then here we're going to do dot theme btn that's the class name we've given to so here i want to say theme button i'm going to add an event listener uh, add event listener uh, and then it's going to listen for a click and then it's going to take in a callback function don't worry you can do an arrow function now because we're not using the this keyword <laughs> then i'm going to say let element and then i'm going to say document the element is going to be document body the body okay document of body and then here i'm just going to toggle the class element which is the body dot class list dot toggle on click okay so we're just toggling on click i'm just going to put a class called light mode okay so when i click that it's going to toggle this class on and off on and off on and off so now let me save 
so let me inspect this so let's watch out for the body element so body here so we uh, we were like selecting the body element in the javascript so now when i click this it's toggling the class light it's adding the class and removing the class adding and removing the class okay so now we just need to uh, set the light mode class so for the light mode uh, I'm gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna here. I'm gonna do light mode. That's the class name we're talking. I'm gonna copy all of these colors here. Okay. And then I'm gonna paste them down here. Okay. So uh, for the for the light mode, you just need to exchange the colors you've used. For example, uh, for the background. I've used the uh, this dark color here. So don't change the variable name, just need to change the property. So I'm gonna change it from the black color, oops, to the white color, okay? Like that, and then save. Then when I click, the background is gonna change to white, okay? So it's on this light mode class, okay? So you just need to change the values of the variables to different stuff. Just mix them around. Okay, so for me, uh, I'm using white as the main background. And then for the secondary, I'm using a different color, which is like sort of a pink color. Okay, for the secondary. So when I toggle the light, it's going to change to this one, pink color. Okay, every secondary color is going to change to this pink color. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, I need also need to change the text color, which is white. So for white, I think I'm using some gray number white. I'm going to paste this. Uh, for white, I'm actually using gray 4. So gray 4. That's where you're going to put white. Okay, so this is gray for now. So it's just the variable name is still being used, but you just need to change the value of it. Okay. Uh, let me see if we need to change anything else. Okay, so let me go to other components. Okay, so... Yeah, we might need to change some colors. You know, instead of me going this, uh, changing the colors one by one, I'm just going to copy, paste the colors that I found worked for me. You can change these colors to whatever you want. So you just need to mix them around. Don't change the variable name because we've been using these variables for a reason. So we just need to change the value of the variable on a different color mode. Okay. So in this case, so what works for me is this color uh, color scheme. I uh, think it really works for me very well. You can, you know, use a different color scheme that you want. It's really up to you. But this one is really perfect for me. Okay, everything works fine. Yeah, I mean, this project is not responsive. Uh, I don't have time to make it responsive. Uh, this is the only time I had to make the video. But uh, it depends how many people have requested in the comments. If you want me to, if you want to see me doing the responsive stuff, you can let me know in the comments, and then I'll consider making a video about it. We'll see how many people have requested. Yeah, if you have any questions or anything, don't forget to uh, ask me in the comments, or you can send me an email. Yeah, that's it. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so now let's work on the media queries. Uh, let's try to make this website responsive. As you can see, where we left off, the website is not responsive at all. Okay, so we just want to try to make it adapt to whatever width we're using. I'm actually using a different project, but everything is going to be the same. Everything is the same. The classes, everything is the same. It's just a different folder name. Okay, so now let's go into the styles and create a new style. Then it's going to be a sas partial to create a partial we need to use an underscore and then we're going to say media and then dot css 
So this is a fa this file is going to be responsible for the media queries. So um, I've already kind of off looked off screen what wh where I'm, I need to do some breakpoints. But if I haven't done that, you're gonna have to like find breakpoints which your website your website is gonna start breaking. So I'm going to start with a smaller screen. I'm going to start with 600 pixels. So I'm going to do at media at media screen screen oops screen and then end and then I want to say max width max width max so the max width for this one I'm going to put that to 600 pixels okay so make sure this spacing here is correct so if you do it like this it's not going to work so you, the spacing must be correct the same as I've done it so make sure everything is correct okay so I'm gonna I'm going to start with the header let's see in the header so at 600 pixels it's 600 so this is the size uh, at 600 I want to have zero padding okay so as you can see there's a lot of padding if I check to the in the styles this should be padding somewhere so there's padding right here I'm gonna set that to zero okay so there should be yeah so I'm gonna set every every padding here to zero so I'm going to say header I'm going to set padding to zero okay so uh, also the other thing is for us to use these media queries we need to import this file so let's go up so to import a partial you just do at import and then I'm going to say media okay so you don't need to include the file extension because SAS already knows knows what it is it's a it's a SAS partial so you don't need to include the extension here as I save and I'm going to refresh nothing works because for media queries to work they must always 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 be at the bottom of everything they must be down here after everything because everything is executed line by line so the media queries must be at the bottom like this and then you have to import them here down here instead of up top okay so now save and save the media and uh, yeah let's see if the media the media query is working for the header click the header let's see if it, so the media query is there so now the pattern is set to zero for the header it's actually the right header the right header content that we need to also set the padding to zero i believe this one right header padding right we actually need to set that to zero okay so we're going to say header target header uh, header and then dot right header and then I'm going to say padding zero with that. Okay, so right header, padding zero, Some, something weird is going on, padding zero. Oh, there's still a padding right. Actually, we need to override everything, so use important. So only use this important when it's really important, when, when you have to. So now we've overridden every every all, all of the styles, all of the patterns. Okay. So actually, uh, well we might want to set this to two RAM, maybe just to give it a little bit of padding around. Yeah, let's set that to two RAM. Okay. So we also want to get rid of these controls here. So to do that, um, we can just say dot controls. That's the class name. So if you want to double check the selector, inspect the controls and find the class name. There it is, controls. Okay, so for the controls, I'm gonna to say top, I'm gonna to set that to auto, to auto, auto, and then uh, we're gonna say bottom, we're gonna say bottom zero. I want it be to be at the bottom and then flex direction is going to be row now <coughs> to the default or initial, you can say initial. And then we're going to say justify content and then we're going to center that and then we're going to say left we're going to give it 50 percent because we want it to be centered and then we're going to trans transform and translate x 
transform and translate x minus 50% only on the x-axis so translate x save let's see what we got so there they are the controls are down here and uh, yeah in there uh, we actually we need also need to set the width to 100% and then uh, we might also want to give it a background color to distinguish it be, be like with our content and then var we're going to use gray 5 gray 5 that's the background color and then we're also going to do control the individual control so the individual control we're going to give it a margin 1 rem top and bottom and then 0.3 rem left and right so uh, now there they are the controls are down here instead of up so when I go over the width it's not there anymore so now there they are okay so now the controls are where we want them to be I'm also going to keep styling the header actually I need to decrease the theme button width as well I'm going to say dot theme btn so we're going to decrease the width to 50 pixels and the height to 50 pixels as well okay so width and height 50 pixels okay so now let's say let me just double check from recording yeah okay so as you can see now it's smaller on a smaller device okay so uh, we also want to target the header content header content header content if you don't know what it is I'm going to inspect again to show you the header content inspect so this is the header content it's a grid as you can see I'm going to target that so the header content uh, we're going to change the grid so we're going to just going to say grid template columns I'm just going to say 1fr 1fr going to have uh, two columns actually no 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 1fr just 1fr because we just want to have one column instead of two now so just 1fr so now we have one column okay so, but uh, it's still a bit messy uh, we say prime bottom 6 ram okay so yeah so and also I want maybe I might want the text actually to be at the top to do that we just need to you know change these grid items change them swap them around so let's let's keep going so now I'm going to target the left header I'm going to say left header I'm going to target that I'm going to say the dot H shape I'm going to get rid of that green shape and then I'm going to, I'm going to set that to display to none so I don't want it anymore so as you can see it's gone now so after the left header let's go to the right header so the right header okay so for the right header I'm going to uh, start uh, uh, I want the right header to be at the top okay so how do we do that so we just need to change the grid so we say grid row it's a grid item so I want it to be the starting point to be one so I'll show you what, what that means so when I inspect uh, where's the grid so this is the grid right so it starts at one it goes two so I want I want this row it was a two to be at one to be at the, the first row okay so uh, we just want to also I'm going to uh, set the width width uh, width I'll set it to 90% maybe 90% okay and then I'm going to set margin 0 auto to center margin 0 and auto just to center the content okay now inspect okay so everything looks good all right so now let's uh, let's keep going I um, also want to target the name actually the name uh, font size I'm just going to change that to 2.5 2.5 RAM okay so RAM and then save let's see how is that inspect name font size and media so this one is not working 
we need to override that with important so when the stars are not working sometimes you might need to override that okay like that and uh, yeah let's keep going so after the right header we're going to target the header content so dot header content and then left header and then we're going to target the image and then we're just also going to set the margin zero auto width we're going to set the same to 90 percent 90 percent okay so so there it is okay so uh, we also need to fix the height actually there is an issue with the height inspect header uh, let me see if we have a height set on the header so the height of the header set to height is supposed to be mean height so minimum height is going to be 100 vh not the not a fixed height so we want to be able to scroll like this maybe so let's go to the header and find header actually i'm just going to look for 100 vh where i've set that value 100 vh so here instead of height we're going to set that to mean height at media query actually at media screen and max width max width and then we're going to do 600 pixels so this is going to be 600 pixels let's do or oh, 600 yeah 610 pixels max width at media screen and max width oh oh yeah i don't know why this is not working screen and oh this is the wrong thing cut this for here like this and then save and then here we're going to say mean height 100 vh okay so you can actually do media queries inside of the element or element that you want to do that's going to edit you can nest only in sas that's when you can do with normal css you cannot nest like this okay so it's not working uh cancel this let's just set that to the normal mean height to the normal header okay so yeah now we have the mean height everything works okay so now let's check other pages oh about now let's go to the about okay so uh, let's go back to the media queries <coughs> And then we're going to say dot about about container so let's look at the about container to see which one it is about 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 section here about container this one that's what we're looking at okay so it's also a grid so we're going to fix that about container grid template columns we're just going to set that to one fr Okay, and then we're going to say write about. So the write about, uh, we're going to say padding top. Padding top. So for the padding top, I'm going to set that to 2.5 RAM. 2.5 RAM. So that's for the padding top. Okay, so I'm also going to, to set the write about grid template columns. I'm also going to set that to one fr to have one only one column instead of two okay so now let's go to the about okay you cannot see it yet but everything is working we just need to get rid of the the paddings and everything about container section two okay so here i'm going to get rid of the padding so to get rid of the padding I'm uh, I'm just gonna do section select the section so for the padding I'm going to do padding I'm going to say 2 RAM 2.5 RAM left and right and then I'm going to override the existing paddings okay so yeah as you can see it looks good so if uh, sometimes when you do like this sometimes it doesn't override the, ex the old ones but now you don't need to do it because we don't need to override we don't need to do it <coughs> okay
okay it looks good so now uh, let's let's go to the so we need right about let's here let's do here we need to do the left side so let's do left about so for the left about I'm gonna say padding right I'm gonna set that to zero and then I'm going to target the paragraph in there I'm gonna say padding left I'm gonna set that to zero also okay okay everything looks good all right so uh, we also need to target the timeline so here after here I'm just going to say timeline so for the timeline I'm, I'm just going to change the grid as well I'm going to do just one FI I just want to have one column for the timeline as well and then I'm just going to set the padding <coughs> bottom to 6 rem and let's save let's see what our timeline looks like yep there it is it looks nice okay so uh, after that uh, we might also want to do the stats okay so let's do it here after the timeline <coughs> about stats so in the bus stats uh, we're going to target the progress bars progress bars if you remember the class names and then we're just going to do one fr like that but we want to have like a single column <coughs> excuse me like that everything is good okay so now let's go to the blog section let's see how the blogs are behaving uh, these are the blogs so we also want a single column in the blogs okay so about and then we're just gonna say blogs so the template columns is just putting into a single column and then giving it a, a padding bottom from bottom six ram <coughs> okay so now you see that if I go to the blogs now we have a single column okay everything is good okay so that's that now we need to also do the contact section uh, okay so actually portfolios we missed the portfolios so the portfolios that should be here portfolios so we're working on this section now the portfolios we wa want to do similar things <coughs> like here so just copy this and put it here okay so it's quite similar now save let's see what we got portfolios there it is everything looks nice okay okay so we might also want to give to this portfolios a margin top but not yet <coughs> okay so that's pretty much everything except the contact contact content content container okay so now let's look for the contact content container okay there it is inspect there it's a grid so let's keep going we need to change the flex direction flex direction we're going to say column okay so contact so the contact was actually a flex not a grid the contact container is a flex not a grid so you need to just change the direction of the flex okay so yeah in there uh, I'm going to target the right contact right contact Okay, so right contact, right contact, I'm going to say margin left, I'm going to set that to zero, margin left, zero, and then I'm going to say margin top, I'm going to set that to 2.5 rem. So I've experimented with these values off camera just to make the video quicker, 
but you can experiment even more with the values if you want to okay so yeah um that's for the right content so if i want to target the inspect one of these inputs so i want to target input control this one i want to target this so i'm going to copy the selector copy selector i'm going to paste it after the contact container here the selector so i'm, I'm looking for the input control number two so input control two okay so that's the class name it's actually input control two like this i see two that's how i've named it so but for this uh project i'm using i've named it different so it's input control two like this but in the uh, the project we did together in the video it's input control two input control like c i c two so here i'm using control two okay i'm just going to say flex direction i'm going to put that to column so that's for the input control two and then i'm going to target the last child of that input control two i'm going to say like this we use a pseudo selector say last child so i want to target the last child within the input control two the last child i'm going to say margin left zero and then i also want margin top <coughs> excuse me margin top so for the margin top i'm going to say that 1.5 rem okay so let's go to the contact so as you can see it's coming nice so here inspect this one still have a margin left i'm pretty sure we set that to zero margin top zero it should be zero input left input control two this one margin left what control to last child margin top margin left zero what's going on let's do this let's try that inspect again it seems to have a it seems to have a, a margin left for some reason last child last child last child i don't know why it still has the oh i think the media query is not applied let me refresh this again and then i'm going to inspect flex direction to column Okay. So this is the last child. So I'm going to copy this selector here. Copy the selector. Uh, cut this and replace with the one you've copied online uh, from the browser. Okay, save. Okay, now everything works. I think it's because of spacing. You actually need to put uh, spacing here. So you need to space here. Space, and then yeah, everything will work. Okay, so yeah, everything is working nice. Everything is working fine. So now we just need to mess around with this uh, title here. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Uh, the title is called, actually, contact item contact item which one is the contact item you know let's make mess with the title first dot main title okay so here we're targeting the h2 and then font size we're going to set that to 2 rem and also we're going to say select this pan font size 2.5 rem okay and then dot 
PG text 2.5 frame as well. Font size like that. Now save. Now let's see what we get. Yep. So there it is. I think we just need. We might need to increase the this a bit. Let's put it to three RAM. Okay. Yep. I think so. You can kind of mess around with this the size of the font size of that. Yeah. So at this size, at this media query, the breakpoint works really nice. So you can kind of work out what breakpoints you need to make changes. You know what I mean? So in this case, we need to fix this. Inspect left header. Left header. We need to set. Uh, let's see header content. Height. Well, I need to set mean height. I think mean height. Or we actually need to set the height to 100 vh for that. For the header content. Okay, yeah, so everything comes nice to our breakpoint. On our breakpoint, it's actually mean height. Header content, we need to set mean height here. Mean height. Okay, so let's go to find the header content. Header content. Header content. Add a content, add a content. So we need to set a mean height here. Mean height, we're going to set that to 100 VH. Okay, so yeah. So now here we can, you know, try to find some breakpoints, which we also need to, you know, kind of mess around with the styles a bit. So I think here the title, there's a margin which I don't want. Right header. It has a padding which I don't want. So here we should look for right header. Header. A new. So here it should be actually set the padding to zero actually. Zero. Refresh that. Something weird is going on. Yeah, set to zero and important. Okay, so yeah, so now everything should work nicely. You can work with the font size. You can reduce the font size at a certain width. You can use the font size percentage. Okay, so everything looks good. So we just need to work on a way to, let's say, you can find like a breakpoint which everything starts to break and start, you know, doing some media queries there. For example, I'll do another breakpoint maybe. Okay, so I kind of uh, okay contact. When does contact starts to break? Okay, so for this contact, it breaks way too early. So I'm going to do another breakpoint for the contact. So here. I'm going to say at media. I'm actually going, going to copy this. To copy this. Paste it here. And then here I'm going to change this to 1432. Okay, so I've, I've experimented with these values of camera. So here the contact breaks too early. So I'm going to copy the contact, everyth everything about the contact. I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to do that early in this at this size at 1432. I'll paste the contact stuff here. Okay, so when I go to the contact, now it starts to you know adapt early nicely. So we can also mess with the padding of the section. So in this case, I'm going to mess around with the padding of the sections as well. I'm going to say a section 
I'm going to do padding top and bottom uh, I'm going to do 7 RAM 11 RAM left and right okay so refresh something weird is going on section okay max width let's inspect to see the body oh the body is a class of section so the body is in, in inheriting the I mean the header is inheriting the section styles so in the header we need to get rid of that so here I'm going to say header padding zero okay so we actually need to override because the header is actually inheriting the section class okay so yeah there it is so now when I you know start to decrease everything is going slowly but it's gonna it's gonna work okay so let's see okay so that's for the contact section I'm going to do another media query uh, I'm just going to do a media query just to sort of sort the padding out so at this size uh, this section uh, not at this size I'm actually going to put another size uh, maybe 1070 or yeah let's do th this size 1070 pixels here um, I'm going to target about container so that's the about and then grid template columns I'm going to set that to 1FR and then in there I'm going to target the right about I'm just going to change the padding top to 2.5 RAM 2.5 RAM so that's for the padding top in the uh, about so that's 1000 pixels so here there it is so everything is going to flow nice in a single column okay and also I'm going to target the main title in here I'm going to say main title h2 and then font size for RAM span and then for RAM so let's save Okay, dot bg text font size let's set that to for them also let's see how that's going to look like okay we can increase that to maybe 4.5 ram or 6 or 5 ram actually yeah okay I think I'll stick to 4.5 okay so that's that you can you know sort of give like a margin top of the con the content here you can give it a margin top to space it between this title here so it's kind of up to you okay so let me check uh, let's do the portfolios shall we portfolios uh, let's do grid, grid template columns let's just do 1fr 1fr so this is like two columns okay so now we have two columns of portfolios and let's do the same thing for the blogs okay duplicate this and change this to blogs okay so the blogs is also going to have two columns okay like that okay so two columns for the blogs what do we need to mess around with again so yeah actually let's do one more media query you can add med med as many media queries as you want for anything and you can customize and change everything that you want to change so here I'm going to do 900, 970 pixels 970 pixels so here the section section I'm going to change the padding 
something top and bottom zero seven ram six ram left and right like this now let's save let's decrease the width so okay yeah there it is everything looks nice okay so we also need to mess with this stuff here now when does it start to break you know i think i might actually want this to happen early uh, what we did with the content the header content header theme button header content left header about okay i think i want this header stuff cut to happen early so i'm going to put that in the nine in the in 970 I'm going to put that in there okay so it happens early okay like that so I think that it makes a lot of sense for it to happen early than anticipated yeah I think that makes sense so we also need to do the same thing for the controls as well controls cut the controls cut that and then we're going to make it happen early so you can you know mess around with the values and see what where you want to start you know affecting your media queries so I think at this size yeah I'll start doing that at, at this size okay I might also want to space around these ones the controls so each control, I think I might uh, do a margin. I'm going to say two RAM for this one. Okay, control margin two RAM. Okay, two RAM seems to be small. Let's see six. It's not working for some reason. Uh, let's override this still not working let's see why control margin oh it's top and bottom it's supposed to be left and right so it's supposed to be the other way around so let's bring it back to 2 rem it's so this is top and bottom this is left and right so i want to apply the margin left and right okay so there it is so top and bottom actually i'm going to increase that to maybe 6 6.6 Okay, so everything's going to look nice like this. Okay, so yeah, you can you can kind of mess around with everything just to kind of look for breakpoints wh where you want to you know affect your your styles and s elements whatever. I'm going to reduce this to one point five or one actually. Yeah, you can kind of mess around with the media queries, the breakpoints like where your stuff starts to break. That's where you start, you know, doing the media queries. You can just create a breakpoint for that. Uh, for the blogs, the breaking quite early. So at some at some certain size, you might want to, you know, put the blogs in a single column. Okay. So yeah. Uh, actually, I'll do one more. I'll do one more. I didn't want to make this video long. I'll just do one more now and then that's it so let's do let's do 700 pixels so in here the section I'm going to change the section here just copy the section here we're just going to change the padding uh, so that's to three okay so we also want to do the about section about stats let's do the stats and then we're going to do the progress bars uh, actually I think I've we've already done the progress bars let me double check about progress bars yeah I think yeah we might want to progress bars 
progress bars. Uh, I think we, we instead of doing the progress bars later. Progress, progress bars here. Instead of doing it here, copy this, cut, and then we do it here early, not rather than later. So here we're just you know changing the display of the progress bars. So we're going to have them into a single column at 700 something pixels, 700 pixels. Okay, so there it is. Everything looks nice. I think, yeah, everything looks nice. So the timeline, it gets affected at 600 pixels. So, I mean, I think everything is really nice. Now we have the idea of how to do the media queries and everything. Uh, we can also kind of mess around with the main title here. So we just need to, you know, set the font size maybe to a smaller one. And then maybe we can change the text or so the big text to a different font size. So you can kind of mess around with the styles to see what kind of styles you're looking for. And what, f what, f I don't know, any size. You can do any media query for any size. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. So if you have learned a lot of stuff, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share the video. I'll see you on the next one.